Hi, I am Rachel Romeliotis. I'm a senior editor with O'Reilly Media, and I am here with Evan Chepliski. He is the creator of Elm and currently with Google. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So um, tell me, why did you create Elm? So uh, I was doing some web programming about two years ago and just found a lot of things really frustrating in a way that they didn't have to be. And I think a lot of languages have this sort of like, when you first start to learn them, it's kind of a terrible uh, experience. In, in JavaScript, I felt like that lasted longer. And at some point, you get this like Stockholm syndrome where like you, you love it even though you know it's terrible. And so I had this intuition that uh, it, it could be elegant from the start so that you wouldn't get these sort of like uh, bad experiences and like sort of, you know, when you try to vertically center something, it just is totally unclear how to do it or you end up having to have different solutions on different browsers or something like this. So it, it started from this is wrong, how can I improve? So tell me, um, now this is basically functional programming for the web. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. So uh, I started out as a, as a Java and C programmer and then eventually found my way into functional programming and, and uh, kept learning new things, kept finding out that programming tasks that before were kind of arduous could in fact be elegant or pretty. Um, and so I wanted to bring that to the web. And so uh, the approach here is basically um, how can we do graphics, how can we do interaction in a functional way? And a big part of that is called functional reactive programming, okay. um, which allows you to talk about events and talks about things that change over time in a very high-level way. So uh, say you have a, like mouse coordinates. These are changing over time. You can attach graphics to that, and the graphics will update automatically. So you can make it purely functional way to render things, and you just hook up your signals. You hook up your mouse, you hook up your keyboard, and suddenly you have a, an interactive application. So tell me a little bit about um, why this seems like a replacement for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So why do you think that they need to be replaced, I guess? Well, so there, there are some fairly deep semantic problems with these, with all of these languages. So uh, like first glance, you know, you have three languages to do one thing, right? If you want to make any web application, you're probably going to be writing three different kinds of files, no matter how big or small your application is. Um, and then second, you get these sort of, you get these issues with each language. So with HTML and, and CSS, you know, this is a language for layout ostensibly. And you know, when you actually want to lay things out, it actually is, is quite difficult. So, like, say uh, you want to vertically center something or you want to stack things on top of each other, so, like, layer things or, like, have them flow down or to the right. These things are, like, su are surprisingly difficult to do um, for, for a language that's for doing those things. And so Elm addresses... Um, one, the high level, level, but it also addresses like low level, uh, or I'm sorry, like text layout. So uh, again, HTML is ostensibly a language for text markup, and yet it's not actually very pleasant to write. So Elm embeds markdown directly, so you can be working with text in a way that's comfortable to read. Um, and for JavaScript, um, uh, replacing JavaScript has become like a, a, a quite a popular thing to do these days. Um, and so that's definitely part of what Elm is, but I think it's trying to be more than that. Um, but so one big reason for trying to get rid of JavaScript is sort of get rid of these ambiguities, get rid of these semantic issues. And one thing that Elm does that's, I think, a really great improvement over JavaScript is it allows you to write asynchronous code without callbacks. So Elm has a built-in notion of asynchrony. Um, and so... Uh, when you need to make an HTTP request, this is very easily uh, represented by um, uh, functional reactive programming, and this sort of gets just uh, as another single signal that comes in. So, like you have mouse input, you also have input from servers, and you can write high-performance asynchronous code without callbacks. 
All right. So tell me, um, it, it, this sounds very promising, if you ask me. And tell me a little bit about what the short-term and the long-term goals are for the language. So in the in the short term, um, I'm working on getting more features. So so adding language features and adding libraries. So that means you know how how short can I get your code for you to be able to write a game or a website? Uh, and so I'm constantly bringing out new libraries to help you do like frame rate monitoring and like date and time sort of stuff is probably upcoming. But then also like syntactic and like fundamental language features. So that sort of would involve making modules better, perhaps adding type classes, um, and, and some syntactic things that make people very happy when they see them. So that's the short-term vision. Uh, more long-term, I'd like to uh, find some, some industry support for the project. Uh, I think that that'd be a great thing for uh, the long-term health and 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 sort of another another landmark in the future of Elm is is I'm planning to return to grad school, and so I think uh, so. Functional reactive programming is, is a fairly recent development in programming languages, and I Elm makes significant strides towards making it practical. And I think the version in Elm is practical and nice to use. I think I think we can do more. I think there's more cool stuff that haven't thought of that would be great to have an Elm. And so I think going back to school would be a great way to focus on how can we make this easier, how can we make this more efficient. And I think that'll bring really great benefits to Elm. So tell me if people are interested in either be you know talking with you or trying to add to the project or even want to use Elm, what is the best way to contact you or start doing that? So uh, there are a couple ways to to get in contact, there's the Elm mailing list called Elm Discuss. Um, and there's a IRC. If you want to come and chat, there are always people around who are happy to help. And um, of course, uh, you can check out the project on GitHub. It's fully open source. You can look through the source code, you know, tell me when I'm wrong, uh, and, you know, submit bugs and all this. Um, and, and finally, like, the website's a great place to go just to get a taste of the language. It has an interactive editor online, so you can look at the language, use the language, all without installing anything. That's great. So um, good luck with that, and hopefully we'll be talking in a year, and we'll have a lot more progress. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.